Good morning everyone, welcome to another relaxing coding vlog. Today I decided to cycle downtown because I haven't been here in a long while and I wanted to see what's up. And even though we still have some snow in the streets, I really feel good about cycling. Today I'm continuing my work on the book and while in the previous vlog I made that little checkbox to mark a page as completed, this time around I'll be working on the backend part to save this information in the database and complete this entire feature. But you may be wondering why am I digging through my backpack to find a pencil? Well, yesterday I broke this little thingamajig on my Reißverschluss and now I have to use a pencil to unzip my jacket. I just can't be bothered to fix these things and I can't be bothered even more to go and buy a new jacket just for this. So, for those of you who don't know, I've been working on a book about software engineering and it has 101 different software engineering concepts that I feel like were the most important and most useful for me in my engineering career. But a lot of the articles are also free, so I put a link in the description if you'd like to check it out. But in this video, I want to give you a behind the scenes look on how it works while working on a feature request from a user. In today's world, you could almost describe this project as under-engineered. My goal is to show you that even with the simplest of tools, you can make something that works and that users like. So in the previous video, I described how the front end is just a little bit of CSS and vanilla JavaScript. And on the back end, this entire thing is just a few little Express.js services. That's it. And a static landing page. So when it comes to hosting, you can see I'm using Railway and the reason is I really like the pricing model where they charge you for actually used CPU memory and disk rather than how much you provisioned. And that makes it possible to run a lot of different microservices where each one uses a little bit of resource here and there. So up until this point, the book service itself was actually completely stateless because I didn't need to keep track of any user information. But now that I'm working on tracking the progress of users as they go through the pages, the first task was to connect a database. And because I was using MongoDB in another project, I just decided to yank the whole configuration code from there, but then I ran into my first question. When naming collections in MongoDB, should you use camel case? or snake case. For some reason, snake case felt just a little bit off given that everything in my JavaScript code base was camel case. And after thinking about it for a while, I decided to skip the whole conundrum and just rename my collection to use a single word. But I'm curious, what do you guys do? After this, I was making pretty solid progress and everything was going fine, except that my scone has mysteriously vanished. And as a bit of a spoiler, this isn't the first mystery that unfolded today. But at this point, I was still unaware that it was going to happen, so I just kept on going and continued implementing the progress endpoint, both to update the progress of the user, but also to get it later. Now, there is no need to sugarcoat it. The code you're looking at here has some massive glaring holes and numerous potential issues, so I'm curious if you guys can see them. But some time ago, we had a discussion on my Discord server whether it's better to try and write your code perfect the first time around, or if it's better to write any kind of version in the beginning and then improve it later. And right now, I was definitely trying the latter, so I wasn't feeling insecure or anxious about the glaring security issues that I was introducing. Not nearly as anxious as I felt about what what happened next, when the second mysterious event started unfolding. You see, for no reason whatsoever, my trackpad stopped working completely. I mean, I was able to move the mouse, but I wasn't able to click. And so I started panicking a little bit because I thought that the development version of one menu which I had running decided to somehow hijack my mouse and hold it for ransom. And straight up, I just stopped one menu altogether. But some of you with a keen eye might notice that I used Activity Monitor to try and see what's going on, even though one menu has a pretty well functioning system monitoring feature. But somehow in the moment, it just didn't feel right to use one menu to stop it itself. It kind of felt a little bit morally wrong. So I tried using Activity Monitor, but it had such horrible keyboard support that I ended up using the terminal in the end. But one menu wasn't at fault and the mystery continued. So I decided to try a different approach. I remembered I had a mouse lying around in my bag, so I thought maybe turning it on and off would fix the issue. And here's a funny thing that I did. You know, one of these pads fell off and for a while I was thinking, how can I replace it? And then I just took the other one off, cut it in half. And if you will excuse the pun, it's not half as bad as it looks. And I don't know what you think about that, but I am kind of proud of my own makeshift solution there. And speaking of solutions, this actually did fix the problem, which, I don't know, it's still a bit of a mystery, never happened to me before. 
But anyhow, I continued coding up this feature, and I won't say exactly, but I spent anywhere between 5 and 35 minutes wondering why none of my code was actually working, before I realized that maybe, just maybe, I should try logging in before testing my feature. But it's just a detail, right? We're not gonna take this as me being completely forgetful. But anyhow, after this, things finally started working, and I was quite pleased with the fact that I had at least something to show for my effort. So I decided to call it a successful day and get going home. In the next vlog, I'll be fixing the glaring issues that I left in the code, so if you're interested to know what those are and what the fix is going to be, make sure to like and subscribe so you can follow along, and in the meantime, if you're learning about software engineering, check out the book, again there's a lot of free articles in it, and I will see you in the next one.